Today I want to talk about obedience. Obedience. Um, turn with me in your Bible to um, Judges, the seventh chapter. Judges, the seventh chapter. Uh, a lot of church folks have a problem uh, with obedience. Uh, they'll blame it on the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Blame it on the devil. Blame it on their neighbor. Anything is 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 their problem, uh, but they want to put it on somebody else. You made me act the way I act. Amen. And most of the time, that's a negative reaction that you're getting. Um, Judges, the seventh chapter, verses seven, uh, says this. And the Lord said unto Gideon, by the 300 men that lap will I save you and deliver the Mennonites into thine hand. And let all the other peoples go every man unto his place. That's his will. That's it. Amen. Amen. We, Father God, in Jesus' name, we do praise you, we honor you, we thank you for this opportunity. Stand behind this sacred desk, I pray that I decrease and you increase in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I, 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 had, to, I had put something in there, we even got something else from it, uh, some other verses, but uh, we just want to uh, use that verse uh, as a... As a scripture text for today, that verse. I'm, I want to talk about uh, one of our emotions, one of, one of our emotions and link that emotion with e obedience. And that emotion is fearfulness, fearfulness. I, I want to talk about fearful obedience, fearful obedience to God only. Amen, say, say that, fearful obedience to, to God only. Amen. To God only. Fear, fear, fearfulness have saved some of us when we was acting like a fool from destruction. Come on, come on, somebody. Amen. It was not wisdom. It was not mama told me not to do that. It was not the preacher didn't tell you. It was just plain old fear that caused you to turn around and stop doing what you were doing. Do I have a witness? It have saved some of us, not, not, not all you holy pious folks, amen, but some of us uh, from destruction, amen. Now, we recognize that God has not given us a spirit of fear. Do I have a witness? Amen. He has not given us a, a spirit of fear, but fearfulness is an emotion that God has given us, but it's not a spirit of, of fear. Amen. You, you don't just go walking around being afraid of everything. Amen. I know, I know some of y'all still believing in the booger man. Amen. But uh, I'm here to tell you that booger man really d don't exist. A amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. It, it, it's just something uh, some of Satan ain't made up. Amen. To keep you in uh, captivity. Amen. Somebody, amen. But obedience, amen. Uh, from Genesis to Revelation, obedience is spoken of throughout the Bible. Uh, in the Ten Commandments, that is the concept, concept of uh, obedience to God, not to man, to God. Deuteronomy 11, chapter, verse 26 to 28, uh, sums it up like this. Obey and you will be blessed. Disobey and you will be cursed. Amen? Amen, somebody. Amen. I, I, I don't know about you, but uh, it ain't confession time, but I just say this. I've been on both ends of the spectrum. Do I, do I have a witness? Amen. I've been on both ends uh, of the spectrum. Amen. I, I, I've obeyed and been blessed, and I thought I was all that in a bag of chips. Amen, somebody. And started smelling myself and didn't go and do what? Disobey. Amen. And get cursed. Amen. One of the Greek terms for obedience convey the idea of position oneself under someone by submitting to their authority and command. Another Greek word for obey in the New Testament means to trust. 
Biblical obedience to God means simply to hear, trust, submit, and surrender to God in his word. We show our faith by our obedience. Amen. Now, let me, let me just say this. Uh, some folks are just naturally disobedient. Come on, somebody. It, it's just their makeup. Amen. Uh, if, if you tell them a pot of gold is to the right, they are going to go to the left. And go then try to figure out why they didn't find a pot of gold. They, they just by nature just won't do what you tell them to do. Even, get this, even, even if they know it's good for them. Come on, somebody. Just because you told them. Just because you reason with them or uh, suggest that they do it, amen, they just won't do it by nature. And they want to express their disobedience, amen, and can't figure out why. God haven't opened up the windows of heaven and poured them out a blessing that they just won't have room uh, enough to receive by nature, by their own nature, by their own spirit. Amen. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me go a little further with that though. Some of those folks are in our churches. Come on. Let me, let me back up. Back up because your church got a whole bunch of mess in it. Some of those folks are in God's churches. Amen. Amen. Uh, they're in the pulpit. Serve on the deacon board. Sang in the choir. And sit in the congregation. Some of them even usher. <laughs> they, they, they're saved, folks. And God is hopefully working on them, and hopefully they are allowing God to work on them. Amen, somebody. Amen, amen. Uh, the weed and the taff. Come on, can I help you here? Amen, somebody. It's going to grow together, and God will do the separation. Do I have a witness in the church house? Amen. You, you try to separate some stuff, you're going to mess up some stuff. You separate the wrong thing. You, you, while you're trying to uh, pluck up some taff, you, you'll pluck up some wheat with it. Do I have a witness? Amen. Amen. Can I state my case? Can I state my case? I want to talk about fearful obedience uh, today uh, at 8, and I'm going to talk about uh, radical obedience uh, at 11. Can I state my case? Amen. Fearful obedience. Matthew 10, 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him that is able to what? Destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Amen, somebody. So, so uh, fearful obedience uh, exists. Amen. Uh, if we fear anything other than God, we are deceiving ourselves. Amen. 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 Don't, don't that abusive spouse. Amen. Don't fear him. Call the police. Come on, somebody. Amen, somebody. I'm talking to somebody. Amen. Uh, be it man or female. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't, don't fear them. Call the police. And you, you can't call the police. Call me and I'll call the police. A amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, clink, clink, I'll get you straight now. <laughs> Y'all, don't miss that. Don't miss, don't miss that. A amen. <laughs> Am I right, Deacon? Amen. Not that you're a personal witness of it. Amen. Amen. But that'll, that'll help get you straight now. Amen, somebody. Mm -hmm. Amen. The devil has deceived us. Amen. Uh, that those that are in Christ should fear him. Come on, somebody. Amen. And, 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 and you shouldn't fear him. Uh, then the other thing is we just don't like to fight that God has called us to fear him at times. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Uh, we we want to say, no, 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 no. That word means reverence. But I'm here today to tell you, uh, there, are some, there are some scriptures in the Old and the New Testament 
where fear don't mean reverence. Amen, somebody. Fear means fear. Amen. Uh, uh, listen to what I have to say and do what I tell you today. Do it with fearful obedience. I, I don't care if you, you feel it, can't feel it deep down on the inside. Do I have a witness? Yeah. Amen. Somebody. So, so, so we, we want to tame uh, the word fear and call it reverence. Amen. Somebody. Uh, I reverence my mother, but she put some fear in me. Come on, somebody. Can, amen, somebody. I, I, I love my mother, and I, I reverence my mother. Amen. I, I just feared my father. <laughs> amen. amen. I, I, I reverence my mother, but uh, she put some fear in me. Amen. That's still lasting today. Come on, somebody. Amen, somebody. Amen. It, it, I, I thought it would subside when I got 20. Uh, I thought it would go away when I got 25, 30. And here I am, uh, 65. And there's some mess stuff she put in me that uh, caused me to fear. Come on, somebody. Not only did my mother, but there were some ladies of the community. Amen, somebody. Amen. Put some, put some fear in you. Amen. That when they came around. Amen. Amen. All that foolishness. Come on, somebody. <laughs> amen. It didn't walk away. It ran away from you, didn't it? Amen, somebody. Amen. So, so uh, 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 one writer said, we have defamed the tiger of truth. We have tamed the lion. The tragedy of modern faith is that we no longer are capable of being terrified. Come on, somebody. Y'all might have missed that. Amen. The, amen. We're no longer uh, being terrified by God. So we do anything and everything that we want to do. Do I have a witness in the church house? We're, we're no longer being terrified uh, by God. Eh? Amen. Uh, 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 and come up and, uh, and ask for forgiveness and then go right back out and do the same thing over again. God is a forgiving God. Do I have a witness? Amen. Psalms 19 and 9 say the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true. And righteous all together. So God give us a, a pure, clean fear. Amen, somebody. Amen. Uh, God called Gideon to lead his people. And the angel of the Lord appeared to, to him and said uh, to him, The Lord is with you, you, you mighty man of valor. Amen. We, we, we're familiar with the text. And, and Gideon said, Who are you talking to? Amen, somebody. Amen. God, God often calls us what we will be. Do I have a witness? Not what we are. Come on, somebody. Amen. And I've discovered, I've discovered uh, uh, sometimes uh, that's what it takes to get folks to a level of what they should be. You'll see it in the text. You'll see it in the text. He, he called uh, uh, Gideon to what he will be. And Gideon said to him, Oh, uh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all uh, his miracles which our father told us about? Saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Amen. Gideon leave out to fight that they had some sin in their life. Come on, somebody. They, they had been disobedience to God. And God uh, will warn you and warn you and warn you. And after a while, judgment. Come on, mercy must step aside. Do I have a witness in the church house? And, and judgment will step in. And, and that's what happened to the Israelites. Amen. God had warned them uh, about their sin. Amen. And, and they just couldn't get it right. And judgment had to had to the stepping. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, if you're a child of God, amen, God still got you in the palm of his hand. Do I have a witness in the church house? 
Amen. Uh, the devil might look like he's in control of your life. Amen. But uh, uh, the devil cannot do no more than God allow him to do. Amen. You're still in good hands with the Lord. Do I have a witness in the church house? Amen. And David said, I'd rather be what? A doorkeeper in the house of God. Amen, somebody. Can I share a couple of thoughts with you now? Get out of your way. I want to talk about bridge burning. Amen. Bridge burning. Then the grace of God. And then the reasonableness of God. Amen, somebody. Uh, Gideon don't believe that God can use him. Uh, so he asked for a sign. And God gave him a sign. Tell him to take the meat and the unclean, unleavened bread and lay them on this rock and pour out the broth. And he did it. And then the angel of the Lord put out the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread and fire rose out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. And the angel departed uh, uh, out of Gideon's sight. Amen, somebody. We know that Gideon... Uh, was weak in faith. Amen. But just encourage Gideon. Amen, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, the Lord will walk with you. Yes, he will. The Lord will walk with you until he gets you uh, where you need to be. Do I have a witness? Somebody say, walk with me, Lord. Amen. Amen. Walk with me, Lord. Amen. God will walk with you. Amen. And on that same night uh, that the angel appeared, the Lord commanded Gideon to tear down his father altar to Baal. You can find that in Judges 6, chapter verse 25 and 26. Amen. Uh, uh, he instructed Gideon to take uh, his father's bull and, and a second bull, pull down his father's altar to Baal, and cut down a shear, uh, the pole beside it. Amen. Amen. God, 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 God is instructing Gideon to do some things uh, that's going to make some folks mad. Come on, somebody. Amen. But there's, there's a reason for God doing this. Amen. Uh, then build an altar to the Lord, your God, on top of them. Good God Almighty God. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Uh, mess up your enemy's stuff. Amen. And then put your stuff. Uh, in his place. He placed the false worship of his father with the altar of the true God and offered a second bull as a burnt offering, as a burnt offering, repeat, as a burnt offering with the wood uh, from a shirt. Amen. Amen, somebody. Uh, Gideon uh, is burning a bridge. Do I have a witness in, in the church house? And, and can I pause here to let somebody know uh, there's some bridges you need to burn? Come on, somebody. A amen. There are some bridges you need to burn. If, if you're going to do a work for the Lord, there, there are some bridges you need to burn. There, in other words, there, you, when you burn a bridge, you can't go back. Come on, somebody. There, there are some bridges you, you need to burn uh, if you're going to do a work for the Lord. Amen. And let me, let me, tell, you, let me tell you something. The, those folks won't just walk away on their own. You, you got to be like they did Job, throw, throw him over the board. Jonas, throw him overboard. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> throw him and put the ship in fast speed. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. Gideon obey the Lord command, but he does it at night. And he take 10 of his servants with him. Come on, somebody. He, he does it. He does it at night. He, he, he obeys the Lord, fearful obedience. He obeys the Lord. Uh, uh, he does it at night and he take what? Ten servants with him. Yeah. Amen. And by the time you tell one person, come on somebody, it's going to get out and all over time. Help me, baby. Everybody going to know it. Amen. And the key is he, he obeyed the Lord command despite his fear. Real courage and faith act in the face of fear. Right. The men of the city discover 
Amen. Judges 6, 8, and 29 to discover what had happened that the altar bell had been torn down or sure was cut down and the bulls had been offered on the uh, new altar to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, they get upset. They want to know who did it. And they discover that it's Gideon that have did it. These men are, are, are beyond offended. Uh, they're homicidal. They, they, in, in other words, they want to kill Gideon. Hallelujah, somebody. They, they want to kill him. That, that relationship has been severed. They, they want to kill him. Amen. They, they say, you do us, we'll do you. Do I have a witness? Uh, uh, they run to Gideon, Father Joash, and say, bring the boy to us. Amen. But uh, Joash, stand up for Gideon. Come on, somebody. Amen. Uh, parents, we need to stand up for our kids when they do the right thing. But be careful. Too many parents stand up for them when they do the wrong thing. Do I have a witness? Amen. Stand up for them when they do the right thing, but when they do the wrong thing. Maybe you don't turn them over to somebody, but when the door is closed. Amen. There'll be some rallying going on in the house. Do I have a witness in the church house? Amen. If you train them in the house, uh, they'll act right. On the outside. Amen, somebody. Amen. Uh, uh, don't stand up for Rome. And you might not turn them over to Rome. But you ought to teach them and bring them up in the way of the Lord. Do I have a witness in the church house? Uh, Gideon, Father Joash, uh, uh, reason with the folks. Uh, saying uh, if Baal was a god, let Baal, amen, defend himself. Do I have a witness in the church house? Amen. Uh, I'm so glad I serve a God that is able to not only defend himself, but he's able, somebody says he's able to defend me too. Do I have a witness in the church house? Uh, if Baal was so powerful, do I have a witness? Uh, uh, the men of the city didn't even have to get mad. <laughs> if he was so powerful, uh, uh, he could have got gay, bear, uh, uh, Gideon all by himself. Uh, uh, if he's such a, a, a great God, uh, let him fight for yourself. Uh, and I serve a God uh, saying, uh, uh, the battle is not yours uh, but mine. <laughs> Do I have a witness? Uh, uh, he'll fight my battle if, if I only be still. Do I have a witness in the church house? Uh, I don't have to fight uh, a, a battle for the uh, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, amen, somebody. He told me that he'll never leave me, not forsake me. Do I have a witness in the church house? Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but when Satan knock uh, at my door, uh, I say, Jesus, uh, I believe that's one for you. Uh, do I have a witness in the church house? Uh, I don't know, but uh, I'm glad uh, that the thorns uh, of Satan have already been plugged. Uh, I don't have to defend uh, uh, my God uh, when it comes to God. Uh, uh, God is able. Somebody say he's able to defend himself. Uh, uh, he's a strong uh, and mighty God. Do, do I have a witness in the church house? Somebody ought to tell the Lord thank you for defending me uh, uh, on the job. Uh, thank you for defending me uh, in my home and, and in the streets and, and even in the church house. Uh, he's able. He's able. What do you know about Jesus? He's all right. So, so he reasoned. Now listen here, listen here. I want to talk about the grace of God. The Midianites and the Aphronites say it's time to get it on again. They show up in the valley of Jezreel. Gideon is between a rock and a hard place. Come on, somebody. He can't go back home. Come on, he, he messed up his daddy's stuff. 
The folks in the city is mad at him. And the Midianites say, let's get it on. He is stuck between a rock and a hard place. The spirit of the Lord come upon Gideon. He blows a trumpet and four of the 12 tribes of Israel respond at a number of 32,000 soldiers. Gideon got 32,000 soldiers, but Gideon is still stuck between a rock and a hard place because the Mennonites are so many you can't even count. I got 32,000, but I, I, I get to 32,000, and that just def Gideon asked for a sign of the Lord. He said, I'll put out a, a, a fleece, uh -huh. and if the fleece only uh -huh. and is wet, uh -huh. and the ground is dry, then I'll know the Lord will deliver Israel. Uh -huh. He put the fleece out. Uh -huh. The next morning he wake up. The ground is dry. The fleece is wet. Right. And he wrings the fleece out and get a bowl of water. Right. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. That, 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 that should have been enough. Amen, somebody. Amen. That should have been enough for, for somebody else, not me. Come on, somebody. Because I still see all those. I still see all those Ammonites out there. Don't, don't y'all get holy with me. Amen. I still see all those Ammonites out there. And I only got 32,000 men and, 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 and what? 22,000 of them we're going to discover are fearful. <laughs> they, they are afraid. They are more afraid than me. Right. Now get this. Get this. Yeah. We only think Gideon was seeing this demonstration. Right. But it's a strong possibility. Not only Gideon, but all the folks right. saw what was going on. Mm -hmm. But we know about, we know the story, right? Twenty two thousand still got up and left. Gideon says, uh, "Let me let me, let's do the thing again." He said, "Now nah, I'm gonna put out again, and if the what the ground is wet and the fleece is dry, surely I know." We're going to win the battle. Huh? He, he asked him. Sure enough, the next morning, hmm, the fleece is dry. And the ground is wet. When you don't know what to do. Amen, somebody. You don't just ask anybody. Come on, can I help you? When you don't know what to do. I've discovered mama and daddy can have some, some good advice. Do I have a witness? I, I asked my daddy something about the military uh, reassignment, and he looked at me and said, boy, I, I would never in a day of force. You better ask somebody else. Amen, somebody, when you don't know what to do. Don't just ask anybody. Be careful asking your friend. Do I have a witness? Because your friend can give you some bad advice. Don't go to a palm reader. Do I have a witness in the church? Huh? Don't pull a, the rabbit foot out of your pocket. Do I have a witness in the church house? Because if the rabbit lost his foot. Come on, somebody. Amen. Uh, and don't flip a coin. Because uh, I've discovered that some coins are double-headed. Do I have a witness in the church house? Uh, uh, and uh, uh, don't go by your gut feeling. Amen, somebody. But you notice uh, uh, Gideon didn't know 
what to do. But notice that he kept going to the Lord. Do I have a witness in the church house? Uh, 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 somebody say that's the place to be. Do I have a witness uh, in the church house? Uh, Psalms 25, 3 and 5 say, Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Do I have a witness uh, what, what the scripture is saying? As uh, long as I'm waiting on the Lord, uh, I don't have anything to be uh, ashamed of. Do I have a witness? Uh, let them uh, that be ashamed which transgress without cause. And show me thy way, O oh Lord, and teach me thy path. Lead me uh, in thy truth and, and teach me for thou art the God of my salvation. What is he saying? Uh, thou art a God uh, that can deliver me. O oh, D, do I wait all the days? Do I have a witness? Uh, uh, you might notice something. Uh, uh, Gideon had a, a humble spirit in going to the Lord. Do I have a witness in the church house? Uh, uh, the Lord is good and, and does what is right. Uh, uh, he shows the proper path to those who go astray. Uh, he leads the humble in doing right and teaches them his way. The Lord lead without unfailing love and faithfulness all who keep his covenant and obey his command. Psalms uh, 25, 8 and 10. Uh, uh, Gideon uh, uh, had a, a fearful obedience. He was doing what God had caused him to do. But he wasn't sure. But he had and showed a, a humble heart. Uh, what do you do? Uh, when you don't know what to do. Trust in the Lord uh, with our own dying heart. And, and lean not until our own understanding. And in all thy ways uh, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Uh, that is uh, the grace of God. Uh, and that's what Gideon was doing. Uh, he was operating uh, in God's grace. Uh, do I have a witness uh, in the, the church house? Uh, uh, God could look beyond uh, his real action uh, and see uh, his heart. Uh, uh, could see that uh, Gideon really wanted to uh, carry out the, the will of God. Uh, and, and he was carrying out the, the will of God. Uh, but he was uh, displaying uh, a fearful obedience. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, even if I'm afraid, uh, I'll go. Uh, uh, because you told me to go. Uh, uh, I might not have it settled in my spirit, uh, but because you told me to go, uh, everything uh, is going to be all right. Uh, I'm getting ready to, to go to my seat, uh, but the last thing uh, is uh, the reasonableness of God. Do I have a witness uh, in Judges, the seventh chapter, 9 through 15. Uh, Gideon, uh, on the night before the attack, uh, he was still fearful. Amen. Uh, after all the, the demonstrations of God, uh, uh, after God had told him uh, that uh, he's going to win the battle, uh, he still uh, had some fear. Uh, and the fear that Gideon had uh, was really not the battle, uh, but it was a battle with his own self. Do I have a witness in the church house? Uh, how can I uh, get uh, uh, beyond myself uh, uh, to be uh, obedient to God? Uh, uh, aren't you glad uh, we serve uh, a reasonable God? Uh, God uh, saw uh, Gideon fear and came and told Gideon, uh, take a servant uh, and go down uh, to the Midianite camps. Uh, uh, he turned down uh, to the Midian camps and, and God had given one of the soldiers a green, dream. Uh, and the soldiers were telling the other soldier about his dream uh, that Gideon uh, and the Israelites uh, was going to win the battle. Do I have a witness in the church house? Uh, uh, I just stop by. I don't always uh, listen to your enemy. But when God uh, uh, tell you uh, uh, to in obedience, uh, I want to give you uh, confirmation uh, uh, one more time. 
Do I have a witness? Uh, he went down uh, and he heard uh, the soldier say, uh, uh, God, uh, going to turn us over uh, 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 to Gideon. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, notice, uh, God doesn't rebuke Gideon. Uh, uh, God does uh, uh, exactly as he requests and more. Do I have a witness? Uh, uh, Isaiah uh, 1 and 18 say, come now, let us reason together, say the Lord. Uh, I just stopped by to tell somebody that you serve a reasonable God. Uh, tell the Lord all about your troubles, uh, and he will. Uh, somebody say, he will. Uh, solve your problems in the by and by. Do I have a witness in the church house? You know the rest of the story. But Jeremiah 31 and 3 said, The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, have I loved thee with everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness uh, have I drawn thee. If you go all the way uh, uh, back uh, to the first chapter of Jeremiah, when God first called him, he, God, Jeremiah really uh, didn't want to go. Uh, he said, I'm just a child, uh, and you're calling me to do a man's business. Uh, but with love and kindness, uh, the Lord uh, uh, drew Jeremiah. And I don't know about you, but uh, uh, we serve a reasonable God. And, and we serve a God that is able to bring you out of your fear and put you on solid ground uh, with love and kindness. Do I have a witness uh, in the church house? Uh, I'm still fearful about some things uh, that the Lord going to call me to do uh, in 2018. Uh, but uh, I'm going to obey the Lord uh, because if the Lord call me, uh, he'll make everything uh, all right. Uh, uh, do I have a witness in the church? Uh, he called Gideon uh, uh, the least of the least uh, and turned him in, into uh, a hero uh, according to, uh, to Hebrews uh, the 11th chapter. When you read uh, the heroes uh, of faith, uh, uh, Gideon, uh, Gideon is listed as one of the heroes. Do I have a witness uh, in the church house? I'm so glad. Anybody here glad today? God can take uh, uh, what you got and, and turn it into a winner. Take 32,000 uh, uh, men, uh, send uh, uh, 22,000 home uh, because uh, of the same fear. Uh, take 10,000 uh, that laugh like a dog uh, and end up with 3,000. Can wipe out uh, uh, your enemy uh, and my enemy. I don't know about you, uh, but the God I serve, uh, he's able. He's able, even in the midst uh, of my fear. I'm going to obey the Lord. Uh, I'll go. Anybody in the church house, I'll go. Uh, even if we fear for uh, where you send me. I'll go uh, where you, you want me to go. Lord, uh, uh, send me. Uh, can anybody say yeah, on the day? Uh, I know my spirit uh, uh, still might not be right. Uh, but send me, Lord. Uh, I'll go. Because uh, I understand uh, you are able. Somebody say you are able. Not only to destroy my enemy, but, but you are able to put trust uh, down in my soul. Ain't the Lord all right? You are able to stand me up uh, and pick me up and turn me around uh, and suck my feet up uh, on some solid ground. If you know he's able, look at your neighbor, give him a high five and say, I tried him, I tried him, I tried him for myself. He brought me through dangers uh, seen and unseen. He brought me over the troubled water Ain't the Lord all right? If you know he's all right, tell him thank you. If you know he's all right. Don't worry about what man say. Don't worry about what man say. Even if you're fearful, go anyway. Do I have a witness? Have some fearful obedience. I'd rather obey God than man. Do I have a witness in the church? He's able. 
He's able. He's able.